So the second typical case we may get, and this is that we have a hematuria pathway as well, is this young guy came in, he was uh, going for some disability insurance and two year analysis came back with blood in his urine. Completely negative past medical history, he's on no medication, he feels great, he works downtown in a law firm and there's, there's nothing else really wrong with him and now he's very concerned that he's got microscopic hematuria. So it was confirmed on two subsequent dipstick urinalysis tests performed in the GP, which is very important. We can get spurious sort of findings sometimes. So one urinalysis finding does not necessarily equal automatic nephrology or, or uh, urology referral. Um, but we do see that uh, over a good period of time, two to three months, he has had significant proteinuria and hematuria. So a guy like this, I mean, this is our pathway again is what does a primary care responsibility ha have and what does the nephrology responsibility have? So in stages one and two, again, these are normal GFR people, greater than 60, have, maybe have some urinalysis findings. Primary care is really charged with the early identification, screening, and management of high-risk patients, especially people with hypertension, diabetes, and cardiovascular disease. And nephrology really is charged with the diagnosis and treatment of high-risk renal diseases with potentially disease-remitting therapy. So this is the complicated stuff that we don't expect this audience or even the primary care practitioners to know about. These are acute glomerulonephritis, IgA nephropathy, things that really are, are, are that we just want to see internally and, and, and provide education for patients as to the best possible treatment. But this guy, at the end of the day, in, in our clinical judgment, in my practice and most of the nephrologists now, would be considered fairly low risk overall. He probably has something like IgA nephropathy, which is one of the most common GNs. He does have some proteinuria. It's not something that's typically amenable to putting him on chemotherapy, uh, medications like cyclophosphamide or prednisone and things of that nature. So I have a conversation with every patient about something like this and say, we could do a kidney biopsy. It's a fairly low risk procedure. You'd be in the hospital for four hours, one in 10,000 chance of a significant bleed. But I'm gonna treat you with an ACE inhibitor anyway, and, and try to reduce your proteinuria. I'm going to follow you every year. I'm not going to really change my management. Mm -hmm. And some people really want to know, and they really want to go in and get that biopsy and, and so on. And some people, most people, say, well, I'd rather not have the holes in my back and just going to treat me all the same and monitor me. Mm -hmm. So we have that negotiation, that conversation. I do some other serum immunology blood work. But really, if the treatment's the same at the end of the day, a lot of people just opt for sort of expectant management. So I would probably see a guy like this every six months or three months initially, and then if he's not progressing over time, um, see him annually, make sure, again, his cardiovascular risk factors are aggressively controlled, that his blood pressure is less than 130 on 80, that he is on an ACE inhibitor ARB, and really that's the end of that particular case from the physician perspective.